I'm about to ruin claw machines for you. Last week, Fluxbase attended a conference for educational technology. Uh, we wanted to bring something really fun to this conference, and we started off looking at things like 3D printers and the motion that they have. It's called a gantry system. We ended up building a claw machine. So the way a claw machine works is a little bit different from a 3D printer. 3D printers have stepper motors that drive the motion in all the directions. Let's take a look at the back. The claw machine starts off at the power supply. We have an extension cord running in here, and the power supply takes the power in, and this power comes into the motherboard. The motherboard has a lot of electronics going on, going on here. A lot of integrated circuits, MOSFETs, resistors, capacitors, LEDs, switches, potentiometers, a lot of relays as well the lot. There's two things about claw machines that make them almost unwinnable when someone wants them to be. On the back here, there's a couple switches. This is how the owner can configure different settings about the machine. One of these controls how long the claw spends in weak mode and how long it spends in strong mode. So when it first grabs, it starts off strong, and then as the uh, game progresses, it goes into a weaker grip. Um, in order to configure the strength of both of these grips, there's rotary potentiometers here that you can twist to adjust the specific strength of these two modes. So when you've got something and it looks really good, the claw machine's bringing it up to the top and it drops it just at the last second, that's the claw machine swapping from strong to weak. But the only important thing that we really need to understand is that there's a couple pin outputs all around the machine to control different subsystems. Let's start down here. This pin output leads to this circuit board right here, and this is the sound board. The sound board has two wires which lead to a speaker in the front. On here is a chip which contains the songs that it plays. This potentiometer controls the volume, which I would show you the music, but it is super copyrighted. Let's look at another one. So this one controls the LED display on the front of the machine. This lets the, the player know how much time they have left or how many uh, plays they have left. Um, this is also how the machine handles any errors. If the coin operator isn't working correctly, uh, it'll display a code on this LED. Um, next up, we have, I believe this one controls the coin comparator, uh, which is a really awesome component. We'll talk about it a little bit more in a bit. And finally, we have the actual controller. So this is a bunch of signals for um, ground, forward, backwards, right, left, and it says down take, that means grab. Um, so all of these wires lead up to the front where all of the user facing panels are located. Let's take a look at this. So this is the LED sign that I was talking about before. You can see right now it just says zero. Um, under here is the speaker. This is the coin comparator. Here obviously is our joystick and here is our button. Underneath here, the speaker just has two inputs. One of them is a positive and the other one is a negative. It uses these inputs to move a weight which compresses air and creates waves of high and low compression, which we perceive as sound. On the LED display, we have a bunch of wires leading in, and this is called a seven segment display. Um, there's a microcontroller on this board, but it processes numbers as a series of lights on or off. Um, so you can see how zero, obviously, has all of the lights in a big circle on. Seven would have only the top one and the two on the right, so on and so forth. Next, we have the joystick and button. So under here, we can see that the joystick and button are just a bunch of switches. So when I move the joystick to the left, it triggers this switch right here. And when I move it to the right, it triggers the opposite one. So all of these wires are color coded so that we can keep track of which one's which. Um, and the button operates on the same method, uh, except we've only got one switch. The coin comparator, uh, I mentioned it earlier as a really awesome piece of machinery. I'm gonna have to get under this machine. The electronic coin comparator is a really awesome component because it takes a coin and then compares it to another coin that gets passed through. It does this by understanding the magnetic uh, personality essentially of the coin that's in there and comparing the coin passing through to that. So if we have a quarter in here and another quarter passes through, it can say that these two coins are exactly the same. 
if we pass a penny through, while a penny is still metal, it won't have the same magnetic ID as this quarter. Let's get to the real claw machine of it. We can see that there's some ropes going on in here. The only thing that we really need to understand about this is that there's a big motor in here, which controls the uh, forward and back position of the claw. Then another motor inside here, which controls the left right position. And a final motor to control this pulley system to drop and raise the claw. Um, there's also this cable here, which controls a little piston, which controls the grip of the claw. Let's see the machine work. So we have a quarter. Uh, like I said, we have to recognize the same coin as inside the machine uh, in order for it to work. And when we put this in, it's just gonna fall out the bottom since we're not using this thing for profit. And I dropped it on the ground, that's fine. Um, so you can see our LED display now shows two. Um, this is because I have the machine set up to take two plays per coin. Um, and we can grab our joystick. Move it around. Nice. Let's see what I got. I'm kidding, it's nothing. Oh, that one just opened for me. Oh man, that's great. Got some Matata Labs pins, a Bird Brain sticker, and of course, the Flux Space sticker. When we ordered this kit, there wasn't much to it. It gave us some electronics and the basic components, and we had to really figure out what the machine itself looked like. This took a lot of engineering foresight, I guess. Um, we needed to decide how wide the machine needed to be, how tall, how deep, um, and actually build it out of wood. Um, personally, I'm not fantastic at woodworking, um, so this project was a lot of fun for us. We also had to 3D print these mounting brackets for all of the controls. Um, so I designed these in Fusion 360, and I even threw on a little lattice here, which I designed in a software called Ntop. To do this, I went through and I measured the dimensions on all of these parts, and then I took those dimensions to Fusion 360 and designed these mounting brackets to be printed on our Raze Pro 3. Well, that's pretty much it. That's a little bit about how we built our claw machine. If you want to learn more, I'll have a blog post for you in the description below, and you can check it out for yourself. Thanks for watching. Tune back in next time.